Hey, Morgan Ensberg is the Valley Cast manager this season, and he'll be joining us on Fridays here on Big Board Sports 104.5, a team ESPN radio. Cats on the road at Connecticut tonight, and they're off to a four and six start. Shutout win last night. Great pitching, and they win two nothing. And the skip joins us here on the Friday show. Good morning, Morgan Ensberg. How are you? Hey, Roger. How you doing? We're good, man. Appreciate a few minutes. Um, let's just start with the four and six start. When I first met you, played no games yet. A couple of weeks ago at the uh, Recovery Sports Grill location in Albany. Now you're off to a four and six start. What have you learned so far about your young team? Well, I mean, obviously this is the first introduction to these guys, a lot of them in pro ball. And what they're learning is really how to play every day. And, uh, the pitchers are, are feeling a lot of anxiety or, or some nerves just playing in front of crowds. You know, they're not used to that. They're also not used to playing in front of or, or at night. You know, the lights are something that uh, we've been playing down in spring training, and uh, it's been daytime games. So that's something that's a small adjustment. But, you know, overall, I mean, I think it's, it, it's, it's okay. I mean, obviously we want to win more and we want to, we, we want to do better. But as far as just the first 10 games introduction to pro ball, I feel like we're, we're in a decent enough spot. Well, your your performance on the mound last night was pretty darn good. Speaking of pitching, I mean, Cesar Rosado has been certainly one of the highlights. He earned the win last night. He and uh, Morgan not allowed a run in 10 innings uh, through his first two starts. Uh, pretty impressive there. How, how impressed have you been? Well, Rosado is a big league caliber pitcher, and, and he's going to have a, sh- a chance to get up there. I mean, it's it's a very firm fastball. It's somewhere in between 92 to, to 94, and, and we've actually seen him get up to 98 miles per hour. And then what, what he really has is a devastating slider that keeps right-handed and left-handed batters off balance. And uh, for whatever reason, because of his arm slot, they just have really difficult time seeing it. So uh, Rosado, up to this point in the first two starts, we could not be happier. And, and he's clearly been kind of the ace of the staff. And then at the plate, I guess we got to give uh, some big board sports salutes to a couple of guys. One, and I'll let you react. JJ uh, Matajevic leads you in hitting right now at 350. And then Jack Adams, who was the Astros' six round pick out of the University of Iowa and led the NCAA in home runs this past season. We have a couple of his home runs. Well, the one I know at the, at the Joe, we have, it was an absolute bomb to dead center, Morgan. But how about the, those two guys offensively for you right now? Yeah, well, I mean, if we start out with Jake Adams, the big country boy from South, Car- or South, South Dakota, and uh, how cool is it that in his first professional at bat, he hit a home run? I mean, it's just, it's so cool, and, and it's been great to see. This is a guy that has as good a pop as there is in the big leagues, it's, it's plus. It's, the way we grade uh, players is from a 20 to 80 uh, point scale. 80 is basically like your, your 100% and, and 20 is down, you know, more like your, your 40%. And he's got 70 to 80 pop. Uh, but it's been just great seeing him get acclimated to the, to the, the minor league game. And, and again, for him to, to get a chance and hit a home run in his first at bat, it's just a really special memory. We got the ball for him, and I wrote on it, uh, you know, first big league or first uh, minor league hit, first minor league home run, first minor league at bat, and gave the date and gave it to him. It's really cool. He's, he's a good kid. And then JJ Manajevic is is a, a very special player. He has a uncanny ability to put the the barrel of the bat on the ball. And uh, a left handed hitter, he's been really uh, driving the ball and also kind of mixing in some some great placement, which is what you need when you get well into the three. So. These are two guys whose names are going to continue to pop up uh, throughout the season and in the years to come. Talking with the uh, skipper of the Valley Cats, Morgan Ensberg, on the road tonight at Connecticut, then they a little trip to uh, Staten Island and then back to the Joe for the uh, 4th of July and a homestand there. Uh, how have you enjoyed uh, playing at Joe Bruno Stadium and the players and what a great little ballpark that is? What, what's your thoughts about the, the Joe and the, and the fan turnout so far? Yeah, it's been fun. I mean, it's it's been great. You know, we have we have the the fan support, which has been really fun, and and the fans really get behind the team, and, and it's great. I think the stadium itself is awesome. I think the field is is really nice, a, a very nice field. They do a great job of of keeping it up to date and, and keeping it uh, really well maintained. But I think it's an outstanding place to start off your your pro career. So I I, I have no complaints there. 
Hey, Morgan, Chris Honorado up here with Roger as well. Look forward to actually meeting you in person. But I wanted to let you know that as a Braves fan, your 2005 Astros team caused me great pain. That 18-inning <laughs> NLDS game four, uh, which I'm sure you, you remember like yesterday, uh, that is a game that I remember to this day. I wonder, I'd like to get your thoughts on this idea that's still floating out there of Major League Baseball perhaps having a cutoff point for extra inning games. Like if they just said after 12 innings and you're still tied, everybody goes home. Yeah, two, two thoughts. The first thought was that, you know, that was a crazy 18-inning game. And I remember in the 10th inning, I, went, I let off the inning uh, in the 10th, and I hit a ball like 430 feet to center, which was just blatantly caught by Andrew Jones because we had that center field that went 436. And I was just so like frustrated that here, you know, it's a home run in any other park and it didn't happen. Then it went eight more innings. But a sidebar to that was I, I had the absolute best view of that, that win uh, on the field because I was sitting on deck when Chris Burke hit that home run. It was just an exciting time and it was a great win. And, and, and that was a very special fun moment, but yeah, you know what? I am uh, very much for some sort of, I, I don't know if we stopped the game, but what they're doing down in the Gulf Coast League, which is kind of the lowest league in the minors, is doing the same thing that they did at the World Baseball Classic, which is they're experimenting with once you get past the ninth inning, you put a runner at second base each time, like each inning. And, uh, and, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, the rule goes that the bottom half team also gets the to put a guy at, at uh, second base. So even if the, the visiting team scores in the 10th inning, the, the home team has a chance to, to come back and put their guy at second base. So I definitely think something should be done. There's a lot smarter people out there than I am, but uh, to, to go keep on going on deep into these 15, 16, 17 inning games, I mean, not only are you risking uh, people getting injured, it's just you have no options with respect to bullpen the following two and three days after those games. Hey, Morgan, one more from me, and that is uh, your, your appreciation for music. I got I to gotta get over there for batting practice at, at the Joe the next time you're home because uh, the, the music appreciation during BP where, where you pick an artist and, and you play that the entire time. How's that going, and, and who's next on the list? <laughs> well, first of all, let's just make no mistake about it. That's going outstandingly well because I get to choose the music. So it's going, yeah, it's, it's unreal. I mean, it's, it's absolutely, it's my dream. We've had a chance to, we, we let off the season with the Rolling Stones. That was a big deal. Uh, we had Led Zeppelin going in there. Uh, we had Tupac. We had Biggie Smalls. Uh, we've had quite a bit. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do next, but I'm feeling something to kind of to the tune of maybe the police, something like that, get Sting in there for something like that. But we'll have to see. Do you guys have any suggestions? Uh, play some Neil Diamond, will you? <laughs> That's Roger's well, we guy. To, yeah, I mean, we could, we could do some Neil Diamond. That would be no problem. I think that some of the Latin kids would kind of look at us a little bit differently on that. <laughs> a little sweet that, Caroline that, would work, huh? Yeah, that, that, might be, that might be something that we introduce maybe later down the road. <laughs> I'm good with the 90s hip-hop. Yeah, uh, Biggie and, and Tupac. Yeah. Morgan, last thing from me, uh, the discussion of Aaron Judge, will he or won't he with the home run derby? As a guy who certainly knew how to hit the home run during your career, does a home run derby set up ruin a player's swing? You know, that's such a tough, golly, that's such a tough question. Um, I'm going to go with yes. That's just what I'm going to go with because what you do when you're trying to hit home runs in batting practice, first of all, Batting practice in the traditional way is absolutely useless. It's a guy throwing 60 miles per hour, and you can get away with a lot of mistakes in your swing. And it really, you know, is, is something that you have to monitor, I think, anyway, and, and pay attention to. But when you're asking a guy to hit a ball, you know, over the fence on purpose all the time, what ends up happening is they start stepping in the bucket, which means they start pulling their front shoulder and their front leg closer towards third base if they're a right-handed batter or closer towards first base if they're a left-handed batter and that throws everything off with your swing your swing starts to actually dip and and get longer so that you can kind of generate a little bit more power and the, and the byproduct there is that you can't catch up to true fastballs after that so you know whatever Aaron Judge decides you know is, is he's going to be thinking about it in the, in the best decision for his 
his career. And, and the Yankees obviously are winning right now. I mean, they're, they're a very good team, and, and we're actually playing them. Houston's playing them. I heard they had a brutal situation last night uh, and just got in this morning at, at 6 a.m., so uh, I'm secretly pumped for that. <laughs> well, the Astros are darn good. I know that. You got that it's, right. It's a, it'll, be a, it'll be a big test for the Yankees. Hey, Morgan, listen, thanks for a few minutes. Good luck tonight against Connecticut, and we'll see you uh, back at the Joe uh, over the 4th. Hey, thanks for having me, boys.